Hello, welcome to episode 42 of the Wasting Time podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Chris. I'm on the line with Nick. How's it going, my friend? It's going all right, man. As good as can be, I guess. How are you? Fine. Pre- pretty used to this way of life at this point. I feel like there's a lot going on in the world at the moment. In in well, in this world at the moment, seeing a hell of a lot of um, podcasts and uh, artists doing live shows at home. And yeah, it's yeah. all good stuff. Yeah. Have you seen anything in, that's that's um, I guess that you've enjoyed in that in that sense. Uh, one thing that I saw, I think it was this week, that I thought was very cool was uh, Goldfinger did another kind of quarantine live performance. Yes. Well, you know, yeah. when they do all their tracks separately, obviously, and they did um, the song "Get What You Need," which was like a more of a scar sounding song off their last album, mm-hmm. uh, one of my favourites. So I thought that was pretty cool. Do you, are they recording them as separate tracks? Then is that how they're doing it? On I just, think. I think. I think. I think they must be. Yeah. Surely. Yeah, I was watching that um, that that post Malone thing that that he did with Travis Barker doing oh, like, the, the Nirvana, Nirvana set. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I watched like ten minutes the other day, and that seemed like they were like recording it live. I only watched about ten minutes of it because it was absolutely horrific. But, <laughs> well, it's uh, Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they they seemed like they were hooked up. To some form of live feed, but all oh, right, okay. Yeah, but when you watch the golf thing go on, you you, you kind of you do think that it's kind of so so well put together that it's done separately, and then we should uh, let's get let's try and get one of them on this show, whether that's uh, Mike returning or one of the other guys who's never been on before. That'd be I think that'd be a good guest to have. Yeah, that Jared. Guy seems to be doing for Bottom of Soup seems to do and be doing absolute shitload. He does. Do you see he does his Tuesday night chats with Frank Turner as well? Yeah, yeah, that's that's how I kind of started to oh, I see. Yeah. Um get visibility of what he was doing. But yeah, he seems pretty active at the moment. This is something I was just gonna say there on the subject of Goldfinger. I think uh they're doing a, a new album because Feldman keeps posting clips of him working with Travis Barker, like right. over the last couple of weeks. And like you can hear, like the music sounds very um, Goldfinger cliche pop punk uh, in a good way. What, just like studio clips? Yeah, studio clips. So, but like Travis actually being at the studio with him, right? But uh, yeah, if you look at Feldman's Instagram, there's a, there's a couple of them. I did see, um, I did see um, Vinny, one of our previous guests, has been doing kind of live live shows on stage. It is it is it called? Yeah, I think uh, I've seen Tony Lovato. And the Dolly Rocks using that too. Yeah, uh, I yeah, I keep meaning to check them out, but I don't know what times that because they're, they're like live shows and you have to kind of pay a donation to, yeah, to watch. Yeah, and it doesn't yeah. look like they're you can pay for like a like a replayed version of it. From what oh I really? Tell. Oh okay. Um, okay. I went on his yeah. I, he posted a set list yesterday of kind of the show he'd done on there, um, and it was just all a load of good. Movie live tracks that I oh, love. Was it? So, oh yeah, you love um, that. I was like having a little, having a look to see how I could kind of go back and watch it, but didn't seem to have that option. Right. Maybe needs a bit more, a bit more researching. I'm. Fi- do you find with the current state of affairs that you're able to stay on top of the podcast you listen to, or are you finding it harder to keep up? Because I'm, I'm finding it a bit of a challenge to be honest. I'm just about managing it, but it's because I'm not commuting to work, which is. Mm. Or and often at work, I listen to podcasts a lot. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean, I'm just usually in the car on, on the way to work, so it doesn't really change anything for me. It's not something I listen to in the car because my my commute is such a short short right. distance. Yeah, yeah, so sure. um, so dog walks and kind of when I'm in the kitchen, am I? Uh, am, you know, it's my time to to get on the podcast. So, oh, okay. so I, yeah, I'm still still keeping across them um, as much as I can. Um, but I'm just really busy with work at the moment as well, which is kind right, of yeah. a bit of a block on that. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm not being too bad. Should we discuss some of this new music that's come out in the last couple of weeks? We can try if I've listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the, there's, there's some things that I know you have. Um, so let's start with the obvious one. How good was that uh, Machine Gun Kelly song? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, really. Really like the sound of it. Yeah, I keep listening to it. It makes me uh, <clears throat> uh, really, really look forward to that, the, the, the full length. Um, his, his singing voice is just so good, I think. Yeah, he's got a really, I think, unique sound, doesn't he? And, um, you know, I've never given his, his rap rap 
music much time of day. Yeah. Um, but I, I did end up getting, you know, I checked out that, that song yesterday and obviously I had to listen to that, that track he did with Youngblood that, that I guess we both really liked. Yeah. Um, and ended up kind of um, dipping into some of his other stuff other bits that he's doing at the moment whilst kind of on lockdown, just oh, he's yeah. done some like kind of rappy hip hop tracks. Did um, you like any of it? Where it, yeah, well, you know, it's not my you know, it's not not really my thing, but yeah. you know, just to hear him rap and it, within whilst he's doing it, he's transitioning into like um, you know, kind of a harmony and, and singing and you know, he's you know, clearly um a very talented guy and um I yeah, I just think he's got a a, a really great interesting voice and, um i think that collaboration with with barker is just um like really works work for him i guess really yeah i think you see barker going in in the direction and he does a lot of uh, in the direction of the kind of hip-hop rap world doesn't he and he does a lot of um collaborations there and you know that's that's fine you know he goes and does his, his drum thing um on these you know with these artists but actually kind of him bringing um, Machine Gun Kelly in the other direction, I think, is just yeah, perfect. And yeah, yeah. Perfect. I think you definitely hear the kind of more recent Blink influences as well in in that in that track. Yeah, massively. Um, but you didn't hear. I don't think you heard as much in the Think I'm Okay single. Yeah, interesting to see how that plays out as as a you know as a record as a whole. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it's interesting that you you hear that kind of a lot of that kind of that that blink synth that you got in those last few records and where that's come from and and you know i, I guess has barker been been a contributor to that right uh, yeah yeah because obviously i don't i don't think it was who i don't know who produced, who produced it no i don't know i'd like to know more to be honest because i saw like when alt press tweeted about it they just said machine gun kelly's forthcoming pop punk album that's produced by travis barker but i don't know if that's right. accurate or not you know no, brilliant. Really looking forward to that. Yeah, um, definitely. Be interesting to see if that Think I'm Okay is on the record as well. Yeah, hopefully it will be because it would fit. I know he was. It. Yeah, he was doing more work with Young Blood. Um, yeah. In the studio, uh, in, the, in the kind of the writing and yeah, recording of it. He was posting clips, wasn't he, of Young Blood in the studio with him? Did you see that Young Blood was on that um, BBC kind of charity Foo Fighters cover? With, no. with all like all the sort of current pop artists, you know, the biggest in the world, uh, like, right. which obviously included Young Blood at this point. Uh, right. I, I didn't give it the time of the day personally because to say I'm not a Foo Fighters guy is an understatement, you know. But I th- I thought it was interesting that he was on that. Bobby Grohl would be very disappointed. <laughs> Bobby Grohl, um, for the list for the listener, is is an old friend of ours who's in Elvana who. Uh, a successful Elvis fronted uh, Nirvana cover band. Yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't approve, but he he's he's well aware of my feelings on Nirvana and Foo Fighters, this so it true. wouldn't be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no secret. <laughs> Actually, on the subject of Bobby Grohl, I spoke to him yesterday because this was another well sort of release, but you would have seen from our Instagram that I posted that uh, my old band re released. R E P and that he was he was texting me about that, just saying how much he loved it. So yeah, I have to thank him for that. So what 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 um how did the re release come about that? I just did it myself just because we got the rights back eventually from the label that went bust. And um I'm still proud of it, so I wanted it to be kind of out there in the world. So I just, you know, did a distro kid release and it's good to see it up on all platforms again. Hey, uh, that's Spinal Spine yes, Man. Death of Denmark, yeah. In fact, it it's funny, um, so that podcast who who we talked to sometimes and they they featured me on when they did a guest episode of people from other podcasts and people from other bands talking about lockdown records to listen to uh, the podcast growing up punk uh, they were very nice about it on twitter yesterday and they've even invited me on for like a bonus episode just to talk about what we were what we were doing in spineless yesmen and also just a, a more general chat about having like authentic accents in in punk music which which is really cool of them don't know that you would have seen this but um john from disconnect disconnect records released a band called the sewer rats who i've never heard of before they're a german Sounds like a nice name yeah uh but i'd recommend you check this out mate they're a german okay. band um kind of like on the more kind of gruff 
vocal kind of side of things, but the songs are very poppy and it's a, it's a fun listen. Um, okay. the, the album's called Magic Summer, so look out for that. Um, something that you and I discussed earlier in the week, our last guest, Frank Turner, put out a new album in your hometown, like live in Newcastle. Yeah, I still haven't checked that out yet, but um, yeah, be... I yeah, stick that on probably later. Actually, yeah, definitely, definitely add it to your music. It's it, it's it's really well done, and like you know, well, it, stripped down versions of the songs that really that really work, and like, and he tells stories, you know, as as the introductions and stuff. Um, cool, yeah, so oh, it's, it's really get, good. Get, get that on when I'm making dinner later. So there was one album last week that came out that that I was really impressed with, but you were less enthusiastic about, which is a band who are making some waves called City Mouth. Um, Kind of like a pop punk synth kind of thing, wasn't it? You you weren't feeling it though, were you? Not really. No, no. I think you've you've already described why I'm not into <laughs> <laughs> pop not... punk synth isn't really really my thing. Yeah, but if I I kind of, to me it kind of felt like a pop punk version of Gleechers, and that on paper is sounds amazing to me, and it it kind of. I felt like it had that vibe a little bit. I think that's why I really liked it. Fair enough. Um, any any other releases that I haven't touched upon? That... There was the the used as well, wasn't there? Oh yeah, the yeah. No, I need to go back and revisit that because um, I quite enjoyed what, what I'd what I'd heard. Yeah. I mean, I get it was sounded very classic used. I think as well. It did. You know, yeah, yeah. They changed too much, which I, I, I think you know think is a good thing. But yeah, talking about young blood. Actually, I was speaking to one of my, one of my one of my mates the other day and saying how kind of young blood kind of reminds you a little bit of a a young Bert McCracken actually. Oh yeah, his voice yeah, and yeah. kind of way you know the way he sings and uses his voice. But yeah, um, I need to yeah give that a bit more of a listen. But definitely showed some promise. Um, I don't know really what's going to happen now as well with kind of releasing music. I think. I guess is is this you know where we are at the moment the opportunity for for artists to re, you know to be releasing more and doing you know being more aggressive with um you know kind of their their writing and recording and releasing music you know with with the lack of live because we we're seeing examples of that like we were just discussing but like as, as we'll discuss further on in this show um like with the guests we talk about you know, they they've put their they don't know when they're releasing their album because of yeah, what's going true. on. And I, I obviously mentioned that I, you know, Newfound Glory have put their album back a month or whatever. Yeah, I think the reality is live shows are going to be, um, there's, you know, there isn't going to be any of that. I think all these when when you know when we talk we talked about all these festivals and tours getting, um, well, I say cancelled, but like postponed and new dates booked for kind of later in the year. Yeah, you know, I think the the reality is that you know that that that, that might not be happening either. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. I think you know we'll come see things. Think see things change in terms of our, I, I guess the the figures and numbers coming down or or slowing and what have you. But um, you know, I don't think that everything will be lifted at once, and I think it'll be the likes of you know those big gatherings that probably will be be um i guess still blocked yeah, yeah i don't know I we'll see, see. yeah we'll see I, I guess you know uh, but i guess the, the 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 world we live in now it's quite easy isn't it for artists to and uh, bands to be able to to record and write remotely and that's true um, you know get tracks sent over to you know a mixing engineer to kind of pull it all together and you know, these definitely definitely doable. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Shall we um get into today's interview? Sounds good. Um so this week we had Ty Vaughan, who's the front man of Broadway Calls, who are a band out of Oregon who've kinda they've been around since the mid two thousands and they started touring over in the UK around O eight, oh nine and they were on a lot of cool tours at that time, and I remember seeing them a couple of times and really getting into them because they, you know, they're really good songwriters. Um, but they've they've been they've been quiet for the last few years, and now they've come back this year with some new music, and they've got a new album out late at some point this year, which which you'll hear us discussing. Obviously, it was really cool to to have some of Ty's time. Yeah, and um, I guess we we're supposed to be supposed to be seeing them in. Uh... 
yeah. in Manchester yeah, last weekend at, as well. At, when we, when we <laughs> absolutely. As you'll hear us mention a few times, this this interview was originally supposed to be done in person when along with a few others at, at Manchester Punk Festival. Anyway, here it is. Okay, so today we are joined by Ty Vaughan of the band Broadway Calls. How's it going, man? It's going real good. How are you? Yeah, I think I think we're we're both doing okay. It's just the same. I think it's probably the same for everybody right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if, that... if you guys are just stuck inside all the time. I yeah, know. we're on pretty, I guess, strict measures now. I guess um, we've been on kind of lockdown, quarantine, whatever you want to call it, for about four weeks. Four weeks now. So yeah, it's kind of pretty normal, I guess. Really. <laughs> so what? I mean, obviously we hear we're hearing all the craziness coming out of the White House over here, but. Um, What's what's things like for you, kind of locally in is Oregon, Oregon, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm in Oregon. I live in a county just outside of Portland. And once you get right. outside of Portland, it gets really different. It gets really rural, and uh, and so it's kind of on a county by county basis. What I understand it, like the people that make the decisions for our health. Yeah. The West Coast seems to have it handled. Uh, compared to some other states so uh a lot of you know everybody i know has just lost their jobs because everybody i know works in a bar or a venue or something like that or a restaurant and uh so everybody's just kind of hanging out and waiting to waiting it's a weird spring so how how are you holding out then what's your what's your kind of situation just you and the dog or you you got family with you or yeah no it's me and my wife and i are here and we are um we just have a dog two cats and three rabbits so we're pretty uh, we're pretty pretty we got a good house going yeah are you you managing to get everything you need kind of food and stuff like that so yeah yeah we got we got masks that's like the only actually the only assistance we've seen from our government so far is uh food like food like st- basically we call them food stamps or whatever you know what i mean and uh, yeah, i don't know if yeah, you have so. that but um i would assume that you guys are getting a lot more help from your government than we are <laughs> we, <laughs> you uh, say that Our, ours isn't exactly fantastic <laughs> well, it's yeah, certainly in okay. my uh, certainly uh, in my the nick's opinion i would say it's like a yeah. grass is greener thing you know i got i mean me, chris and i are both quite fortunate um, and that we we both we can both kind of still work and we, we we can work from home and stuff like that. But um, you know, there's a lot of a um, lot of people losing their jobs, or I guess a lot of self-employed people, and like you say, bar bar workers and and what have you, um, right? Are pretty heavily impacted, and obviously our healthcare system's pretty uh, under quite a lot of strain at the moment. Um, but yeah, I guess we're just doing what we can, and you know, hopefully get out get out the back of this before long. Yeah, yeah, fingers fingers crossed for that. What what is it um you do outside of music, Ty? Do do you have like a, a regular job these days? Yeah, I did up until this hit. I was working right. in this really cool just um in Portland there's a lot of food carts, you know? Like they're just like yeah. little trailers and and there was uh I worked at this really awesome food wood fired pizza cart that was run by this great guy mm-hmm. who uh did everything he could to help all of his employees as soon as everything went down. So, um, you know, he's kind of in the same boat as we are and it's just a very small business. There's only four of us working there. So it's like, uh, we just kind of wait and see what happens. You know, what, what about the rest of the guys? What, what, what are their kind of situations these days? Yeah. Josh is, uh, he lives like way out in the mountains. <laughs> he has a great situation. He has his family out there and they, uh, they're pretty, they're pretty good. They um, he's setting up a home recording studio in his garage, so he can uh, start working on demos and stuff out there. Um, so he's pretty he's pretty happy. And uh, Adam, same thing. He he's been he's a construction worker usually, so he uh, mm-hmm. he's kind of he's kind of still working. It kind of they they let him know on a daily basis what what's going on. So. We should be doing this in person right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> which thank thank you firstly to agreeing to do that, and then obviously thank you for for doing it this way. But yeah, such a shame. Like um, obviously, we should all be having a blast in in Manchester right now. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you do you have much? Did you have much else booked up over the kind of 
um, the kind of spring, spring, summer, summer time. We had a couple shows with Nerf Herder in the Northwest over here that we were going to play. That was at the end of March. And those were the first shows to get canceled for us. Okay. Um, that was, uh, <clears throat> that was just a weekend with them in Portland and Seattle. And then, and then the next thing we had going was the European Flatliners tour. And yeah, we would have been at Manchester Punk Festival this weekend. And, uh, it would have been awesome. <laughs> and it was already sold out. You know, like it was, we were really looking forward to that fest. We were actually, that's kind of how we first started talking about coming back to doing a European tour is right. through Manchester Punk Festival. So oh, I see. Oh man, it's such a shame. And, and, and I mean, for us as well, because it, it's something that we've always talked about doing with the show. Let's, let's go to Manchester, you know, one of these years and we'll do, you know, as many interviews as we can that weekend. And then we got it together this year and then obviously it wasn't to be, but I guess it's, yeah. a, sh- <laughs> I guess it's a shame. I see, we, we see all the, the other festivals kind of rock and punk rock festivals going on over here. They're kind of being rescheduled for the back end of back end of the summer, whether that happens or not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I guess with Manchester Punk Fest being more more on the DIY side, I think you know they've. I mean, they put a bit of a press release out, didn't they, to say that it just they just wouldn't be able to get it back on back on the road again. So maybe yeah. in a couple of years' time, hopefully we can. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I think it'll. They, it seems like they have a really good team. Like they obviously had their shit together, like yeah. you know, before this. So I think that they'll be able to make it happen again if they want to. Hopefully. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, for sure. What uh, what did what did you have lined up after you were going to be done with the Flatliners? Um, was it was it getting that? Would we be getting into like record release territory after that? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, as of now, the plan is to put our record out in July on Red Scare Records or Red yeah. Scare, and uh, yeah, and uh, they, you know, that's still kind of up in the air. <laughs> but I think <laughs> right. it's I think it's going to happen. It's um, but we didn't have we we it's hard to make plans right now you know so yeah, we have yeah. some stuff that we are crossing our fingers about but we can't really you know can't really depend on what's going to happen i don't really know i think the record comes out in july that's pretty much <laughs> where we're at okay. right now so yeah. so is is it basically a case of you know if you're not able to do i don't know whatever it is you have planned like some shows around the release then it kind of doesn't make sense to do the release at that time it makes sense to put it back because like, i noticed like uh, i think it was new found glory did that last like they had a record coming out next month and they were just like we're going to put this back two months or whatever so is oh, that yeah. going to be like a do you think that'll be like a common thing that will you know if the longer this this thing goes on it's hard to say i i hope not because in a way you know people still need people still want the records it's something you can of course enjoy at home and uh i i want the record out you know really bad i don't want to i don't want to hold it on hold on to it for another few months we recorded it um the first week of december and we're all so happy with it so i don't know it's we're just kind of itching to get it out and i think <laughs> you know i don't know if you know toby at red scare but he's really cool and easy to work with yeah, not not personally, but I, I always hear good things about him. I, you know, I've I've had like Sam Russo, who's worked with him before on our show before, and he always sings his praises. I think we were talking to the men singers, and they were saying about their great relationship with him. So, yeah, people are always very positive about that guy. Definitely, yeah, yeah. He's a uh, he's somebody I can you know we can just like call whenever I have a question about whenever my anxiety gets going about the record right. release so i can hit him up and be like hey man is everything still on track do we need to revise any plans and he's usually been i mean he's always been really cool so oh, fair. Who, who'd you record it with recorded with scott goodrich down at new tone studios in pittsburgh california which is very far east bay california okay. and um and uh it's where we did our first record and it's um, always been one of those studios that uh, felt like home to us. You know, we did our, we, we recorded there in our old hardcore band before Broadway calls was even a band. So um, yeah. we, you know, it, we were comfortable there. And then Scott is a, somebody we knew from the very, very early days of Broadway calls. And we've watched him, get into engineering and recording and we've heard 
the stuff that he's produced. I mean, he did that Pete record by Culture Abuse that came out a couple of years ago. Okay. And that's what really solidified it for us. Like, damn, Scott knows what he's doing. This is awesome. So we have a really good friend that works at this killer studio. So it just made yeah. sense, you know. Not not so long ago, put out the first single, Meet Me on the Moon. Right. Uh, which is obviously available wherever you get your music. Um, totally. Yeah, sounds good. And and obviously, the the so the, the record's called uh, Sad in the City, right? Correct, yeah. You, you can see, like, on YouTube, like, there's you doing some live sessions. So you playing that song a couple of years ago. So presumably mm-hmm. you've had that song around for a little while. Um, which is a catchy little number. It's certainly what I want from a Broadway cause song. So I'm looking oh, forward to hearing you. that song recorded. We wrote this record in like batches of like three or four songs. And, okay. um, and that was from the first batch for sure. Like, and then we recorded those with at bridge city sessions, which is a Portland yeah. thing where they film you and, uh, record you. And it was kind of our way of demoing those songs also. Yeah. And yeah. it was our first new songs in a few years. So, um, so we went back to them for a second batch of demos. Also, we didn't film it and put it online. It was just really that, that was uh, just for Toby to hear. And then that Actually, was when we started yeah. talking to Red Scare. Uh, it was when we wrote our second batch of songs for the record. And we knew we were going to make a record. That was really when we started talking um, and getting serious about it. So, and that was probably two years ago at this point. So, yeah. Okay. okay. When did you get it all wrapped up then? Is it. Quite we were writing all the way up until we went to the studio. Um, we write re- really slowly, and we were pretty picky about what we do. And uh, But we went in the studio the day after Thanksgiving over here, which is the last weekend of November. And, mm-hmm. um, and I think our last song, I mean, we were still writing musical parts and stuff while we were in the studio. So we were kind of going last minute, but it was all three of us really... Uh, every practice which was nice you know it was a very full band record writing experience the way we normally do these things is like we kind of obviously take it back to the start and go through the career so like um I, if it's okay like can i do that a little bit with you guys because there's just a few questions i want to ask uh you know Absolutely. different point different points in the life of of broadway cause um i guess i just like starting with asking like what the scene was like in Oregon in the mid 2000s and like what made you want to switch from doing like hardcore music to the sort of pop punk sounds really yeah that's a great question um and I love remembering that I'm alive because we were yeah we were doing this band called Countdown to Life and it was like a kind of a heavier hardcore band um and we we did one full us tour we hit, we hit the west coast a lot and during that time um like between 2000 and 2003 you know okay. and uh and then we did like one full us tour with this band called where eagles dare from arizona they were a killer and uh it was pretty obvious after that though that we couldn't really continue the way we wanted to um all four of us the way we wanted to and so we uh we had just got this van that we needed to pay for and Josh and I did not want to stop touring. And, uh, so we asked Adam if he could play bass for us in this new band that we were going to start. Yeah. And, uh, Adam couldn't do it at the time. So Matt, our roadie, he became our bass player. And then, yeah. um, and now, <laughs> Adam's back in it but like at the at the time we we just kept going we just started Broadway Calls as a side project because uh we just wanted to not stop uh, we didn't really think it was going to be the main band I always okay. considered Countdown to Life to be the main band for at least like a year or two after Broadway Call started I was still oh, like interesting yeah yeah and and then and then I kind of just finally gave in to the the fact that countdown wasn't really a band anymore and okay. uh okay. yeah so what was what was the driver between like the change in in style i guess a little bit then was that uh is that just happened naturally or did you like consciously say right this band's gonna be you know gonna write slightly different kind of style of music yeah it was definitely both i would say because this is the kind of music that i listen to mostly i would say you know bands like especially at the time it was bands 
like Alkaline Trio and I'm more black and Lawrence Arms, constant rotation in the van, even though we were, you know, playing hardcore music. And, uh, right. and so I was like, okay, well, I know how to write this kind of stuff. Cause we had been in, you know, poppier punk bands in high school and stuff like that. Mm, but I had yeah. never really, I had never really written lyrics that I was serious about or anything. And, uh, I didn't write any of the lyrics in the hardcore in countdown. And so, um, that was new. And once we started getting going with that, it started to get a little more comfortable and we were only playing shows with hardcore bands. So, um, that kind of helped us stand out, I think on the West coast okay. when we first yeah. started out because that's, those are the only people we knew were those bands to play with. And so we got on those shows and, uh, quickly realized that, you know, kids that listen to hardcore still like melody and stuff like that so <laughs> it's, uh, it was nice yeah cool so i mean i guess fast forward on then and when did that kind of start to really kind of pick up pick up steam and, and develop into kind of something that actually you know right, right this is quite a quite a big deal now and you know became more of a bit of a serious and a full-time thing for you after we made our first record probably after we made the full first full length um mm-hmm. and we just kept booking tours and then um eventually it was a weird kind of fairy tale bullshit thing where <laughs> some kid that worked at Adeline Records saw us play at a house show in LA and yeah. bought a CD and played it in the office, you know, and then they heard it and we got we got somebody reached out to us, you know. And that's when that's when we got our first booking agent and stuff like that and that's when we started to really tour a lot you know okay what were some of the st- standout tours from that time um that was so that was probably that was going into 2008 when adeline put our record out and so we did yeah. work for that summer which was hard and we but it was still something we had always wanted to do you know it was like a just cross it off the list and um and it was it was cool i got to watch against me and the Bronx and every time I die every day, you know, and yeah, that, nice. was, that was great, but, um, it still felt like a job, you know, it was, <laughs> it was rough and, and that was cool. Um, we got to our first time ever going to mainland Europe was with Alkaline Trio. Uh, mm-hmm. that was a dream come true. You know, they're one of my favorite bands still, still are. Uh, so was that, that tour when, Oh, what was that other band on it? The, was that when it was with the audition in Alkaline Trio? Because I remember seeing you guys at uh, Coco in London with with those two bands. Was that that same tour? Yep. Yeah, that was that tour. Yeah, that was uh, 2000. That was the beginning of 2009, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, that's correct. So yeah, that was awesome. And we had been to England before for a couple of weeks, but that was our first time doing like a four week European tour, like Western Europe tour, you know. And it was with one of my favorite bands so that was yeah that was a standout for sure yeah but we did come we were there a lot during that okay. time i think we we were there in 2008 and then i think we came back three times in 2009 well uh, we okay. did the the trio tour early in the year and then we came back and did that reading and leeds festival and some dates with the offspring and rival schools and polar bear club yeah. and like all kinds of weird bounce you know you're just like bouncing around playing these weird small shows and stuff and then or and huge shows and then uh yeah 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 but it's different from day to day you know around the festivals and then like i think oh yeah then we came back with set your goals and fireworks at the end of the year so that was a busy one for us for sure actually in europe more than the us <laughs> yeah. so, uh, we were definitely trying to like focus on that i think you know just trying to make it happen we had <laughs> we were so excited just to be able to go overseas i think and um so I, I assume it's around this time that you kind of struck up your kind of relationship with like kingston and banquet records and i assume john <laughs> tolly was involved in that absolutely yeah he was uh banquet was always so cool to us when we came over there from the very first time we we stepped foot over there um that during that was when we played that give it a name fest in 2008 and uh, yeah and we were on tour with all time low on Cobra Starship, which is like the weirdest fucking tour. But uh and it that, was that, that's that's an unusual lineup for you to be on, yeah. Yeah. 
and we, that was the first tour we'd ever done where it was like okay you're gonna go do this you have no idea who these people are you're not friends with them beforehand you know like before yeah. before that tour we had pretty much only tour with friends you know so that one was a that was crazy um it, it wasn't bad it wasn't bad like you know it was just like uh totally different than anything else we had ever experienced you know um and that was our first time over in england that was 2008 um okay so i don't know it's 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 weird to have been there so much and then <laughs> we haven't been back in a while since 2013 i think at this point i was gonna say i say alkaline are kind of starting to kind of to drill up um, I'd well do some shows again now. I saw they were they were announced for Slam Dunk. Maybe there's a maybe there's a tour around the corner with a with a with a with a slot with Broadway's name on it. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that'd, that'd be, be great. great. <laughs> yeah, I love that man. I I'm always excited whenever they do new music, especially since Matt's so busy with Blink. Yeah, of course. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was just going to say before on the subject of Banquet Records, if you have you seen how much they've they've grown now, Ty? Like it's just it's crazy, like how big the music scene in Kingston is because of them, and not just for for this kind of music, just like any big pop artist when they're doing promotional work in London, they have to go and do an acoustic set that's put on by Banquet Records. It's insane. Yeah, I have. I follow John and uh, and Banquet on Twitter, and I I've seen the stuff that they've been promoting over the past few years, and uh, and yeah, it's it's crazy because um you know it was just like this small record store when we were over there and they put on killer shows right. at night time you know they, and stuff but yeah it's very very cool and that's what's so strange is we haven't been there to see that at all so i'm excited to go back someday to <laughs> someday yeah when yeah, yeah definitely <laughs> yeah kingston's always been rad uh, that's always been like the place for us whenever we hit the uk um, right. it's like oh yeah we can play london and it's gonna be awesome and then we're gonna play kingston it's gonna be like guaranteed fun you know yeah it's a great place i'm i'm, I'm currently trying to persuade my fiance that it's where should we, we should move to after we get married um oh yeah just good yeah yeah because uh i just think it's a great place to be is she not keen for, for multiple reasons no i think i think she's 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 open to she's it open. but you know yeah we're looking at several places yeah it's uh it's cool uh, i um it's is it like considered part of? Do you guys consider it part of London, or is it like something? I I think technically yes, because it's still <laughs> it's like Zone Six of London, so it's still technically one of the boroughs. But it's not really London. It's basically a town out, you know, on the outskirts of London, really, isn't it? But I suppose technically it's part of London. Gotcha. If it gets if it gets the wife to move there, then then let's call, we can call it London. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We miss Banquet, and they've always been really fucking cool to us. So, can't wait to see them again. Yeah, and we 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 can't wait to see you over that way. Hopefully, when I'm living there, um, Nick, what were you going to say? Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to kind of take it back, I guess, a little bit again. Um, just kind of past those 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 introductions to European tours, and kind of um, I guess moving on with the progression of um, Broadway calls, really, and kind of what what was the next the next thing after those those, those crazy touring days, I guess. I guess after that it was time to make our next record. I remember, um, I remember we weren't we were in like the in the stress of of second record mode while we were on the Alkaline Trio tour. You know, like in the in the stress of writing, um, yeah. and uh, we had met the Side One Dummy people when we were doing Warp Tour in two thousand eight. Yeah, it's like J- Joe Sib and. Bill, I think the other guy. Yeah, yeah, Bill and we, 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 they were, we did Warp Tour, you know, and they have, they're very active on that. They, they were the ones that did like the Warp Tour compilations. And yeah, yeah, side well, of course, yeah. Part. yeah. And, um, and so we kind of be, you know, we became friends with the people that worked for them out on the tour, and, uh, mm-hmm. and then Joe came and saw us one night in San Francisco, um, and it was a really really weird night i mean he lives in la he came up to san francisco yeah. he watched us and fake problems in the same night at different venues uh, oh wow we playing, <laughs> yeah we were playing different shows like down the street from each other he like 
Yeah. I think the story is that he signed us both that night, but okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was bouncing down between the shows. And, uh, and so we made that record, um, that, and that was, that was when we got introduced to like Bill Stevenson, um, was through the side window dummy people and started recording in the okay. blasting room. Yeah. yeah. What was, what was that like working with a legend like that? <laughs> that was, I, I was, um, not open to it at first, honestly. I, I was, really? I, I wanted to go record with Willie at New Tone where we did our first record and, um, and beside one dummy, you know, they, they were like, Hey, we want, we want to, we think this is a good idea. Obviously it was, you know, <laughs> and, and I was just really territorial about songs and songwriting. I'd never, we had never worked with a producer before. Um, I didn't know how that was going to go. Um, yeah. even though Bill's a, you know, he, I, I do consider him a musical genius and I, it only took me a few days to really understand that, um, hanging out with him. And we were really lucky to, to be able to do that because, uh, I, I think he made, you know, he helped us make those, those songs way better. Um, uh, and he's mm -hmm. really good at what he does. And so, uh, yeah, that was crazy to be able to work with him. We, we went there for three weeks i think and yeah three weeks for that first record on side one and uh <laughs> you're just living there with this guy who uh has made all these legendary records and it's it was a crazy experience and to be able to go back a second time and do it um was crazy a few years later because we didn't have the, any label support at the time and he was just bill was just that cool to us like he hooked us up and he uh and he's like no come out and record we're gonna make another record and um and we'll deal with the money and the budget another time you know and what's it so you weren't with side one at that at that point then when you went in with him for a second time not for the second one no no we were supposed to be and then uh, it just fell through and so we was it kind of a bit of a a, a sour end with side one dummy it was sudden for sure. It was definitely sudden okay. and unexpected. Yeah. Um, and, and it was you know, honestly what it came down to is just a big communication breakdown. Um, and it, it was a communication breakdown amongst people that worked at the label and us, you know, so it was a uh, different messages going to different people. So it was, which is a bummer, but, um, it's fine. We ended up making another record. Yeah, we, we stayed on schedule, basically. We were just two weeks out of going into the studio, and we found out we didn't have a label anymore. Um, and that was that was the hard part. And that was uh, when we were scrambling. So were you, were you still touring pretty heavy heavy at the time? Or we were. We were trying to. Um, we were. That was 2012 at that point when we got to yeah. our second record with Bill. And, uh, yeah, we had done some stuff in like 2011 and, and, uh, I think it was after, it was at that point when we lost side one and, um, we went in to make our third record that we were kind of in this weird spot where we, we didn't know what was going to happen next. And, uh, and that's when we ended up with no sleep because no sleep yeah. was this this like new west coast label that was killing it and uh so we reached out to them to see if they have any interest in putting out the record and so they put out comfort distraction for us well who were they killing it with at the time was it bands like mixtapes and major league i remember being on that label if i'm not mistaken was was, was, was there anyone else I'm, I'm... i thought they had done some stuff with like two and more back in the day and, oh okay uh, yeah yeah you know like like some over like friends like on the west coast um okay because we used to play, play shows with them and stuff like that right. and uh yeah and actually we we had known the mixtapes people for a while before uh we were ever you know associated with them um, through no sleep when we put out that split um it just made sense you know that was kind of one of the one of the bands that we were like oh yeah if they, if they have a sound that we can, you know, we can do that on no sleep. So we obviously we've got the splits and the toxic kids EP and stuff, but just, just looking at the four lamps, 
which what like how how do they how do they hold up to you after you know obviously it's been a few years since all of them and like which one do you like the best and for what reasons yeah that that one's uh that one's tough i i mean honestly our new record that we just got done making i know this uh, sounds pretty cliche it, it is, uh, <laughs> you, it is you're best. obliged to say that yeah <laughs> It's definitely the best shit we've ever done, and I think we right. we think of that because we we didn't work with a producer this time, and we we used all the tricks that we learned from working with Phil and from just writing songs, you know, over the years and learning about um, what makes a better pop two or three minute pop song, you know, and sure. uh, and Josh got really into. Uh, studying songwriting he started up another band while we were down these past few years um he started a country band called wonderly road and oh, right. i didn't know that I okay think, yeah i think they might have uh they have to have at least one song on spotify and out there on youtube you know um, chris has got a soft spot for country music he? I do like and it's really country. good yeah what, they made what, some what, great... would you say they were called ty sorry they're called wonderly road wonderly road okay wonderly road yeah and they uh they have a whole record finished and it's really good it's just not out anywhere yet and i don't know when when that's going to happen but um it will someday because it's killer and they spent a lot of time on it but the fact that Josh and Adam, um, Adam's in Wonderly Road also. He plays bass in that band oh, too. Oh, is he? Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. The fact that Josh is more focused on songwriting really helped me. Uh, when I you know, would bring ideas to practice, we would get songs nailed down a lot quicker than we used to. You know, um, because he, had, he has this, uh, just a different approach to songwriting than I do. And uh, it's great. This this record's been great. The last the last three records, I don't know. It's hard to. I can't. I can't say which one's my favorite. Honestly, it's just. Uh, I like Comfort Distraction a lot. I think it doesn't really get as much love as as our other ones, and I think it's just because of the timing that we put it out. Um, right. But I think that the the songs on it are some of my favorite songs to play and uh and i think it's some of the best stuff we've ever put out yeah yeah cool. like songs i feel like songs like lucky lighter could be just like a, a big hit like at least within the our world you know and uh thank you I yeah I, I think i like that song too we play that one almost every show and it's that a makes fun sense. one to play. yeah 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 i like the simplicity of it you know which i mean obviously in a good way um yeah i think it's a really good pop song thank you it's funny, like in the in the build up to talking to you, like um, for me as well, like revisiting some of your stuff that I ha- maybe haven't listened to for a while, like even the two thousand and nine record, like just some some of the songs on that I, I'd forgotten about. Like, um, yeah, it's been really fun to to revisit it, and like, yeah, I guess that's why I asked it, just because I was curious as 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 the actual artist, how it feels hearing those songs again, you know, songs like Election Night, bloody hell, that seems like another lifetime ago. <laughs> yeah, it does. It really does. Yeah, a, pos- um, a positive song about election, like you can't imagine that now. You know, <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, yeah, when we when we started working with Red Scare and they agreed to re-release digitally our first record, because um, it had been you can it wasn't on Spotify, it wasn't on any anything. Once Adeline closed down, it was just gone. And um, um, so I hadn't really listened to those songs until f- for a long time until we yeah started talking to red scare and uh yeah it's cool it's it was it's when i hear that i just think about where we were in 2006 and how sure. things were just totally different back then and uh that was a cool experience making that record for sure i loved i love that first record i can see why um i can see why people still hold some of those songs close you know because it was just a time and a place it was very yeah, yeah very mid mid 2000s uh california fun tour shit you know yeah 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 tunes like back to oregon i think i feel like that that got a lot of people into your band that i think that was that was the introductory song for me for sure oh yeah that's uh i mean luckily we all still love playing those songs (laughs) (laughs) that's good yeah we still do play them and they're really fun and we just kind of uh 
Yeah, I don't know. We've never. I don't think there's ever been a show where we haven't played that song. I, I guess. I guess probably want to just kind of see. Um, obviously, after comfort distraction, kind of you don't. You know, you down tools as a band a bit um, for a few years until you pick things up recently. Um, kind of, how did that come about? Um, you know, how was how was it for you guys? Yeah, it was. Um, after that record came out, we toured a little bit we did one european tour with narwolves and great cynics which was really fun oh yeah i saw you on that tour i saw the kingston show at fighting cox i think that was yeah yeah that was a good time i mean that was a that was a weird time though like uh personally for me i was just like in the the deepest darkest depths of depression i have ever been in and during that time and i was like we were all sharing a van you know, all three bands were sharing a van and it was just yeah. a party mode, good times vibes, except for me in the front seat, just reading and being a shithead. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was weird. I wish I could go back and redo that one, honestly, because, uh, because that was such a good group of people to be surrounded by. I was just in a weird headspace. And I think after that tour and after that record cycle, it was pretty short. Uh, um, it was. It felt just natural for us to slow way down, and and uh, we all kind of went our separate ways, not in a conscious decision uh, way. It was just more of like, all right, we're slowing down, and we're gonna focus on other things in our lives, and get get organized. Um, and uh, we did, and we spent a few years just uh, playing shows whenever people would ask us to. You know, we never broke up. A lot of yeah. people thought we did. Um, we would still get together at least every few months and play and, um, you know, play a show every once in a while on the West Coast. But we did one West Coast tour in 2015 with success, which was pretty fun. Um, you know, we've done some, like, dates on the West Coast right. with Menzingers and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, nothing heavy like we used to. And I think that... Um, it was really good and healthy for us to do that. And when it was time for us to come back, it was really when Josh started getting um, motivated. He, he got yeah. me, he got me motivated for sure. He, he started writing songs um, and encouraging me to write songs. And, uh, and then once we, you know, once we had a, a handful of them, we were like, Oh shit, I guess we're going to make a record. <laughs> When 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 did you start to kind of rekindle that? Then when when did that kick off? Uh, uh, the songwriting hard to say. I would I could I would say maybe three four years ago. It was okay. a while. Um, we were, you know, we were. Uh, I would say probably twenty sixteen, maybe um, twenty seventeen. Okay. So we not were, that long of a gap then, I guess. Really, when you when you say it like that, I guess. Um, yeah it just seemed like it it was a relatively long gap (laughs) well i suppose when you spend like pretty much (laughs) sharing vans and and whatnot i guess yeah that time away probably feels like forever right yeah definitely did um did you were you guys still kind of close or did you kind of detach and just get away from it from each other a bit kind of during those kind of Uh, few years we were we were still we were all really good friends still um, you know, there was definitely never any like weirdness. It was just, yeah. uh, Josh and Adam have families and, um, you know, and I was working in Portland and living, um, just doing, doing my own thing, kind of bouncing around. I lived with my sister for a while until I met the woman who, uh, I ended up marrying and, mm-hmm. um, you know, we all just kind of focused on our personal lives for a few years. And then when it was time to start writing again, it felt, it felt normal and natural. And we were coming up with the best stuff we'd done. So really like, this just makes sense, you know? Um, but I, I probably wouldn't have just started making another record unless Josh would have been like, Hey, let's do this. Yeah. So I guess when did, when, when did that turn into, um, a kind of recording studio and start, st- I guess the live shows more than anything really is, I guess, you know, you can, I guess, write and especially with, with the tools, uh, you know, available to, to you now, you can kind of work through the kind of songwriting and, 
and recording and what have you but when did you decide right we're gonna go and take some of this on the road and get back into the the you know the, the kind of touring side of things i think it was when we decided that we were going to make a record that we knew that we weren't going to find a label unless we were willing to go out and play some shows you know um at least that, that was our thought behind it and uh when we started talking to red scare they were toby was really cool and he was just like hey I, you can play as many shows as you want to i'm not gonna go you know set a quota for you to go reach or anything like that like uh you, you do you and we're gonna and that's pretty much what we're gonna do we're just gonna do the tours that make sense to us and that look fun and uh and we're very lucky we know that like we have killer opportunities because we have good friends you know like the flatliners tour was really that came together because just from talking with chris you know and he mm -hmm. he it's because we've been friends with those guys for years and years and and that's really how a lot of cool things that came about for us came about in the first place it was just like hey talking to somebody you know networking and not really but not like in a gross way where it's like a, hey what do you got going on <laughs> next spring you know let's let's hang out for a few weeks yeah. i was gonna say i suppose we've seen i mean we've had quite a few guests on here from kind of bands from you know the kind of early mid 2000s who have kind of had that resurgence and you know still can still can i guess make time to you know to tour and to put music together whilst you know dealing with no the normal lives that they're, they're kind of living now and it's really i guess it's great for, for likes of us to be able to um reconnect with with yeah. you know kind of those old bands and see them live it's like it's it's great you know one thing that we learned when we toured with the bouncing souls in 2009 is that they they don't do anything longer than like two weeks without taking like a week off you know or right. two or three weeks left. and that's just because they need that balance with their with their home life and uh and now that makes total sense to us you know and it's like yeah that's the way to do it just you got to have balance you can't get burnt out we can't do the six week tours like we used to because that's it doesn't make sense for us anymore. Well, hopefully it'll not be too long till we uh, we see you back over here. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I, you know you've done done your fair share of Europe anyway, I guess. But um, I guess I guess that opens more doors for you in the future, doesn't it? Right. In, in yeah, we of... we haven't been there since 2013, so it's <laughs> we're really we were really looking forward to this flatliners tour. So oh, it's pretty man. it's a bummer. Oh, um, but we'll be back. Yeah, we'll get over there eventually. Uh, have you have you been back over this way, like just in your personal life outside of the band at all, or has it literally been since you were here with the band? No, 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 not at all. Um, that's one thing that about being in this band is I would I would have never been able to have any traveling opportunities like I did right. without right. it, you know. Um, and uh, so yeah, we were definitely really excited to go. Uh, so we'll we'll get over there as soon as we can. You know, I don't know how much time you have, Ty, but like, uh, we, you know, we could we could probably wrap this up fairly soon. But we just kind of we ha we had some sort of like quick fire questions. Yeah. Like, uh, my wife yeah. um, my wife has got me scheduled for a, a quiz, a virtual Zoom quiz with friends <laughs> at uh, at seven thirty our time. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh God, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah whatever you need yeah zoom quizzes are the way to go these days um yeah yeah so if that's cool with you we'll we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll shoot these last few questions at you and then let you get on with well i suppose your day because it'll be late morning for you or mid morning for you i guess yeah totally right yeah my my, do my dog will be ready to go play when I'm, as soon as we're done with this <laughs> bit of a cliche question but i always find this interesting asking bands if you could pick like what one band that you've toured with that was your favorite who would it be Oof, that's tough. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with. Uh... <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go with the Cobra Descendants. Starship. Sorry. Yeah, so I'm gonna go. With the, I'm gonna go with the Descendants. I mean, they took us. Nice. They took us. Like out of just because we I asked Bill if we could go. Basically, I was like, hey can we go to Japan with you? And he was, and he took us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, so that's like some crazy magic shit that, you know, doesn't, isn't supposed to happen. Um, they, they've always been so cool to us and, uh, and they've given us some really cool 
shows to play with him. So, uh, how did you I, find Japan? Oh, it's incredible. Yeah, I, I would love to go back. Um, we, we we've been really lucky. We got to go over there twice. The first time by ourselves, played a music festival and some and like our own show, and it was really fun. You know, that second time was with uh, Descendants, and it was insanity. You know, it was it was surreal. Amazing. The, the, the big, there's a big audience for, for, for your kind of music out there, I guess. Well, it certainly was. I assume there still is to an extent. Yeah, it's so fun to play. So fun to play out there. What about this one? Um, often artists kind of dodge around this question, so so we won't blame you if you do, but what's your least favorite band you've toured with? Or, or contenders for it? Damn, I wish I could. I mean, we did Warp Tour, so that was like <laughs> just full of them, you know? That was... That was... <laughs> That, I couldn't even list all of them. It was uh, like, you know, there was 80 bands a day and I liked maybe five of them. You know, it was, it was <laughs> rough. But yeah, I, I don't know the specifics. I, I can't think of I can't think of a specific band because, I you know, I blocked it out. It was, it was not yeah, of course. Uh, and of course, this can be interpreted as least favorite, like musically wise. You might like them as people or just the biggest pricks that you talked with, you know. But of course, you don't. We, 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 you don't have to name and shame people, you know. No, no, we did this one tour. Uh, it was so cool. We did this tour of Streetlight Manifesto, and oh, yeah. which we, you know, we're not a ska band. I didn't know anything about them. I'm not. I didn't. I didn't have any history of that band. But they're beloved by a lot of people. And yeah. Uh, and this other band that we were on tour with. I can't remember what they were called right now, but I'm, it's easy to look up. <laughs> you know, they're like some weird corporate rock band that got the spot um, because they were on some major label and they had been uh, produced by like Tom Morello or some crazy shit. And uh, they were on that. Tour. <laughs> that was weird. That was a weird one. God damn it. I can't remember their name, but it was funny. Leather pants. They were, they were leather pants. Nice. Well, <laughs> well, not nice at all. Horrific. Cool. Um, I guess, I guess, a question around what what you what you listen to at the moment. What what's what's your kind of quarantine playlist? Um, and what I guess what's your anything you're watching at the moment as well whilst in quarantine? Any what kind of thing you into at the moment? Um, I've been listening to a lot of, of uh, Bob Seger. Um, okay. The, the the play or the uh, soundtrack to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood really hooked me. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen that movie, but uh, I I haven't seen it yet. No. It takes place in 1969, so the whole soundtrack is from that year, and it is it's killer uh, if you're into Neil Diamond and and just huge, you know, um, <laughs> huge pop songs. Uh, that's been good. A lot of Beach Boys lately. Um, we just got done finish watching that movie love and mercy i don't know if you've seen that um no about brian wilson really cool yeah, story yeah, i'm aware of it but i haven't seen it it's sad it's tragic uh but it's also beautiful um paul giamatti is such a good actor that you just hate him in this movie it's it's great oh really <laughs> okay yeah okay yeah no he is a great actor yeah so i don't know just i've been trying to keep it mellow um you know <laughs> the the sounds of the beach boys and the the 60s i don't know we've been i listened to uh i listened to some punk playlists that uh my friends make but um other than that nothing really uh nothing brand new any bands that stood out to you on those lists on those playlists there's a band called uh there's a hardcore band from brooklyn i think called show me the body that i got into last year really cool um really weird uh not you know i don't i'm not familiar with any other kind of hardcore that sounds like them they kind of remind me of vocally they have i mean vocally at times the guy almost sounds like tim armstrong to me it's interesting okay. but it, they're definitely a hardcore band and uh and i think the singer plays banjo plugged into a pedal board and i know that sounds really <laughs> bad but, but it's not in a hardcore band gotta, that sounds interesting yeah yeah it's you got to check them out show me the body um, I think I think that's unless there's anything from you, Nick. I guess we're just about done. Um, by the way, was that band called Outer National that you were refer- referencing? That's them. That's them. <laughs> yeah. I just googled that tour. Yeah, they 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 look like I've never heard of them. They look like an interesting bunch. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
yeah that's <laughs> one of those bands that you just you don't remember until somebody asks you about them like what yeah so, <laughs> yeah yeah I think I think the likelihood of them listening to this show is probably pretty mi- minimal. So yeah, I'm not worried. But mate, we, we want to thank you so much for for giving us some time um, on yeah. this Saturday. It's been been a pleasure talking to you, and just uh, obviously, as I said before, it's a shame that we didn't. We're not doing this in the Airbnb that Nick and I hired by the venues in Manchester. But you know, maybe next year. Definitely, yeah, um, yeah. We'll see you guys as soon as possible. Thanks for letting me do this. Cool. Thanks so much, Ty. Nice one. Take care, Ty. Thank you for listening. If you liked what you heard, we'd love it if you could subscribe to us uh, wherever you get your podcasts, whether that's iTunes or Spotify or Stitcher or anywhere like that. Um, Also, check us out on social media. If If you just search for Wasting Time Podcast on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, give us a like or a follow on any of those. And also, we love hearing from listeners as well. So um, feel free anytime to drop us an email at thewastingtimepodcast at gmail.com. Or obviously, you can message us on social media as well. But um, yeah, we'll catch you next time. For you to arrive. And I can't wait for you to arrive.